The content of a quarter million leaked State Department documents is still being analyzed. Its impact to be determined. Yet in our third story, the right's predictable hyperventilation over what they think should happen to WikiLeaks and its founder, all while questioning President Obama's leadership. The man behind WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, is currently wanted by Interpol, but for allegations that have nothing to do with WikiLeaks. That doesn't stop former House Speaker Newt Gingrich from ad for advocating for Mr. Assange's imprisonment. He is an enemy of the United States, actively endangering people, and he's going to get a lot of folks killed. And I think that's a despicable act, and we should treat him as an enemy combatant and as an, as an absolute enemy of the United States. The half-term governor, Sarah Palin, echoing that sentiment on her Facebook page. He is an anti-American operative with blood on his hands. His past posting of classified documents revealed the identity of more than 100 Afghan sources to the Taliban. Why was he not pursued with the same urgency we pursue al-Qaeda and Taliban leaders? Congressman Peter King calling WikiLeaks, quote, a clear and present danger to America. We should go after them for violating the Espionage Act. And the reason I say foreign terrorist organization is because they are engaged in terrorist activity. Mr. King is also asserting that the leaks don't bother President Obama because, quote, his entire political upbringing has been on the left. When he was in school, when they spoke about great American heroes in the 1960s, 1970s, no one was greater than Daniel Ellsberg. Daniel Ellsberg, the man who released the Pentagon Papers to the New York Times in 1971. Meanwhile, National Review columnist Jonah Goldberg wondered back in October, quote, why hasn't Assange been garroted in his hotel room years ago? Mr. Goldberg now taking a more nuanced approach to Mr. Assange, instead accusing the left of selective rage. Is there any prominent person or editorial board outside the administration on the left who made a huge stink about Valerie Plame's outing who is remotely as horrified by the ongoing WikiLeaks travesty? Well, since he brought it up, how about those on the right? First, here's former Governor Mike Huckabee speaking not about Assange, but the person who provided WikiLeaks with the documents. Whoever in uh, our government leaked that information is guilty of treason. And I think anything less than execution is too kind a penalty. <sighs> yeah, Mr. Huckabee had a slightly different reaction after President Bush commuted the prison sentence of the only man convicted in connection to leaking of CIA agent Valerie Plame's identity, Scooter Libby. Mr. Huckabee praised Mr. Bush for his compassion. Thankfully, Defense Secretary Robert Gates has called out the hysterics while putting the leaks into perspective. I've heard the impact of these releases on our foreign policy described as, as a meltdown, as, uh, as a game changer, and so on. I think, I think those descriptions are uh, fairly significantly overwrought. Is this, is this embarrassing? Yes. Is it awkward? Yes. Consequences for U.S. foreign policy? I think fairly modest. Here with me now is Greg Mitchell. He's my colleague at The Nation, where he writes a daily blog. He's been live blogging the WikiLeaks disclosures. Greg, thanks for coming in. Happy to be here. First, I guess, I'm, we're not surprised by the right's reaction, but have you been surprised by the sort of bloodthirstiness of yeah. it? Yeah. Well, you didn't mention Bill Kristol uh, using language today like neutralize Assange. Uh, so I, you know, it's really code language for what people would really like. One of the prominent uh, bloggers at Red State uh, talked about the, his wish was to see him get a bullet in the back of his head. So that's kind of you that should be, whatever you think about the leaks, whatever you think about uh, of, of what has come out and Assange himself, uh, it should be repugnant to, uh, to Americans. Yeah, and, and I want to I want to bear down on this one point. I mean, the, 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 the accusation against Assange is that he's endangered people's lives. Right. Um, <clears throat> there hasn't. Am I wrong that there has not been any evidence that that is right. the case? Right. That's absolutely true. And uh, you know, of course, the point is, uh, even if that is true, how many lives could be saved by many of these revelations? We had so many of the important revelations, and ones yet to come. You know, people forget that this is going to be going on for days and weeks and possibly months, related to wars that the U.S. is involved in in Iraq and Afghanistan, not to mention Pakistan and other and other areas. So, uh, we don't know what what lives may be saved by, by these revelations and any openness that would come out of it. Finally, I want to ask you this question because uh, you ran editor and publisher for years and you're a media critic. You know, it's one thing for the right to sort of go after Assange. It's another when media outlets you would express to expect to express solidarity also seem to be condemning him. Has the press reaction to, to Assange surprised you? Well, it hasn't really. What's interesting <laughs> is that what, who is, what has been the conduit for these? It's been the press. I, if the media was going to be, be fair, they would be attacking the New York Times or the Guardian. I mean, the Guardian leaked 
the documents to the New York Times. So, I mean, why aren't, why aren't media people, you know, mad at the Guardian? They seem to be aiming everything at Assange. Now, I think that's good. I don't think the press should be attacked for this. So, uh, but on the other yeah, hand... You're not, you're not saying expand the circle no, of condemnation. No, but it's amazing that the media doesn't want to attack themselves. They want to focus all solely on Assange. And I, I think that's very revealing of, uh, of what's going on here. What do you think it's revealing of, though? I mean, I, you know, m- my understanding of the history of, say, the Pentagon Papers was that other media outlets basically right. stood, the ball. stood with New York Times yeah, and they picked it. up the ball and they signed an amicus brief. Right. Why don't we see that here? Well, it's interesting. I mean, I think I think the press. We have seen it with the press that you've had this really unprecedented collaboration around the world with the, these news outlets. And I think what people don't understand, the biggest thing they don't understand, there's only been 500 documents that have already been released. And unlike previous leaks, WikiLeaks has worked carefully with these news outlets in advance to have the documents redacted. And uh, they purposely have done it that way this time to have the media. So there's this incredible collaboration that the media is in the middle of, and yet everything seems to be aimed at at Assange. And uh, so I, I think uh, uh, that's why we've seen such violent violent rhetoric. You're not going to have that. So uh, um, you know the media is is hanging in there on this so far. Greg Mitchell, he's my colleague at the Nation. He writes a great blog, and he's been covering the WikiLeaks scandal minute by minute. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Coming up, why investors may turn any rumblings of recovery in the housing market into subprime 2, the sequel. It's called a putback, as it, as in back where it came from. Noah's Ark found a home in Kentucky. It also found a flood of tax breaks. And when Rachel joins you at the top of the hour, the senator who is actually ready to ask Republicans to go ahead, make his day, filibuster. 